We are going to sort the ensemble of Cobra Kai into the three dojos. Let's start with Mary. I would definitely put Mary in Miyagi-Do, 100%. In real life, she loves Miyagi-Do and she loves the traditional moves that come along with the dojo, yeah. How about Tanner? I think I'd put him in Eagle Fang. I'm just picturing him in his night shoot coat when we do night shoots and it's cold and he wears this big long fur coat and these dramatic boots and I just picture him in Eagle Fang. <laughs> Let's do Sholo. Ooh, I think Sholo would be Cobra Kai. I think he would get caught up in it. I think he wouldn't necessarily want, just like a lot of the kids, you know, Robbie and Tori and everyone else. I think he is strong, but I think he would, I, yeah, I think he's just a, a strong person. So maybe he'd get caught up in the Cobra Kai dojo. How about Jacob? Jacob, I'll put in Cobra Kai. He's just so good at it. And he's a hard worker. And I feel like he would want everyone to like meet him at his level. <laughs> How about Gianni? Eagle Fang. Eagle Fang for sure. I feel like he has too big of a sense of humor to be in Cobra Kai, but then also too big of a sense of humor to be in Miyagi-Do, if that makes sense. Let's get Joe in there. Joe hands down Cobra Kai. He would not for a second stand for any Miyagi-Do or Eagle Fang things, no. Joe is one of my favorite people because I just end up spending so much time with him in the Cobra Kai dojo and he's just always cracking jokes and like always he always has something to say for the day and he keeps it interesting and he's always riffing like he's always just adding something that's completely not in the script that just kind of takes me throws me for a loop and he's like i'm just trying to get tori to laugh because you never laugh which dojo would you join yourself i used to say cobra kai but i think it might be miyagi do i think i would join miyagi do because i i love meditation and i love yoga I think I would enjoy that, that backyard setting, but yeah, it depends because when I work out, I really do get competitive and intense. So I think, uh, you know, Cobra Kai would make, I don't know, it, I'm kind of torn. Yeah, I, I feel your pain. I'm competitive and intense and belong in Cobra Kai, but I feel like the meditation would serve me well, so I should think about that and join Miyagi-Do. Yes. Or I could have like some sort of weird middle ground. I, I don't know. And join Eagle Yeah, Fang. Yeah, maybe we should just be an Eagle Fang. Screw it. Yeah, I feel like maybe that's the path I'll go down. How about this? So of everyone you just named, you all meet at the All Valley and everyone, everyone fights. Who wins? Thomas would kick my ass and everybody's ass, but because he actually trains martial arts. I mean, all the guys do from the original, but I think Thomas is just... He's insane, like, but out of the kids, I think Jacob, Jacob is very fast uh, and just really good at martial arts now. First order of business here is to play some dicey questions, but the Dice Tower didn't make the trip from LA, so you are gonna be picking your own numbers. I have eight questions listed here, so you pick three numbers, one through eight, and then whatever questions you land on, that is where we start at least. So what is your first number? I'm gonna go with six. Six is rap gifts. What is the most memorable rap gift you've ever received? That is a great question. We have received some memorable rap gifts, especially on Cobra Kai. People go so hard on the rap gifts and each of the cast members does something individual and different. And um, this year, uh, Ralph gave us uh, a cup that was identical to the one he had received on the first Karate Kid. Um, and it, yeah, it was, it was basically a replica and he, um, he did, like hand delivered it to my trailer. And I think he did that for everyone. He's just the most thoughtful guy. He, um, I feel like he hand delivers everything and like makes sure that he has his touch on everything. And he, he thinks about each little gift and each little piece of memorabilia he's going to give. Like he's so attached, his heart is really in the show. What's your second pick? Go with three. What is something you did for a role that now makes you say, I'm glad I did that then, but never again. My mind specifically is just going to an item that I own in my basement, <laughs> which is um, this cat litter box. And uh, back on Jesse, when I was working with Disney, they had my face on the side of a kitty litter box and like my mouth would open and that would pour the cat litter out. And there's just been really random like merchandise made on the show or random things I've had to wear or do or 
yeah, I don't know. There's been there's been a lot of moments. That's not that's definitely not the worst. What is your final number? I'll go with eight. Eight is game show. If you could be on the game show of your choice, what show would you pick and could you actually win it? I think I'll go on Family Feud because my family gets so competitive. I've thought about that with my family, but like I don't think I'd be able to play nice. I think they would suck at the game and then I would get annoyed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I could see that too. It's just like the real relationships and dynamics would definitely come through for better and for worse. Hello everyone. Welcome back for a new episode of Collider Ladies Night. I like I should just get to it. Everyone out there knows how obsessed I am with Cobra Kai. I got the wrong <laughs> shirt on though. Peyton List is here. She plays Tori. She's in Cobra Kai. My my Cobra Kai sweatshirt was too hot, so I put on the Eagle Fang t-shirt. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Do you remember the moment when you figured out that it was really for you? And I guess maybe may because you have to get older to remember these things, but when you figured out that that was the right career path for you, that you really had to commit to it. I had a whole change of heart as I got older because I remember um, my mom asked me, she goes, you know, we, I just thought you could save money for college and, you know, try this out as a hobby. You do you, do you want to, do you want to do this? What do you, what do you want to do? Um, I think I was, yeah. And, and I said, no, I, I want, I want to do this. I want to, I want to try it out. And I, and I want to, I want, I want to go in and I want to take this seriously at about eight years old. Uh, I told my mom that, and I, so I went in for a TV show and I remember a dad of a little girl came up to me and he was like, you just probably want to leave because uh, my daughter already has the part. And I remember in that, that was one of the moments I looked at him and I was like, your daughter does not have the part. I actually have the part <laughs> in my head. I did not say that to him, but I remember going in and it was in front of, um, God, what was it? it was for Cashmere Mafia, which is the same creator of Sex in the City. And so I went in and I just, at that point I was like, screw it. If this girl has the job, what do I have to lose? And I went in and I just like really like fought for it. And then they said, that was amazing. You're basically, you're our girl. And I left and I got the show that day. Um, it was with Lucy Liu, Francis O'Connor. I played Francis O'Connor's daughter. And then that was the moment I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to act. I like this. And I like fighting for things and I like proving myself. And so that was kind of the moment. My mom was like, I, my mom didn't have anything to do with it. She said she sat in the waiting room and she kind of overheard the dad and her jaw dropped. She was like, my poor kid, like, this is it. She's, she's completely done. That's it. Um, yeah. So that was kind of the moment. I'm so glad it ended up that way. I cannot believe another parent said that to you. And I know parents, <laughs> parents were brutal. Parents were so brutal. I don't know if this is true for everybody, but I've heard it in the past. So I'm curious if this was uh, your experience. Again, acting at such a young age, and I imagine you're treated differently when you are a child actor versus when you are a young adult and, you know, maybe playing a bigger role in the creative process. So of all the shows and films you worked on, is there any particular one that kind of marked that switch for you where you noticed that you were being treated differently because of your age? I, I guess Cobra Kai because I, and I've gone through my sort of college years working on Cobra Kai. And I mean, my mom started, when I started on Cobra Kai, my mom came with me to set. And then as of fourth season, that was the first season my mom had no longer come with me because we're so tight. And I've always just really leaned on her. And um, so, yeah, I think I just noticed a shift, just not having, you know, your parent around or not having someone around and just having to carry yourself on your own has been a real shift for me. Um, I don't have someone to help communicate for me or, you know, kind of, I, I notice that I, I kind of like to talk through her sometimes, even though I am the age that I am. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about Tori's situation. So she's pretty intense in seasons two and three. Were there ever any scenes that I guess required some workshopping in order to determine how far to push it with, with that kind of mean quality and how much she pushes back against Sam or, you know, was it, was it kind of on the page? I feel like they, John, Josh and Hayden do a good job of putting it on the page, but I, I also think that I, uh, in the season three finale, when Tori comes into the LaRusso house, I didn't think it was going to be the level that it was. And I remember on the day just going more, more, more. 
really try to scare her, which I feel like it was a, you know, more of a note that I got in the, the third season, which I didn't really prepare as much for. I didn't, I expected Tori to redeem herself a little bit more after season two. And then the writers kind of surprised me within season three. And so I think I sometimes try to play against whatever is written. You know, I, I, I try to do something a, a little different, but um, yeah, I mean, in, in season two, you just when you're responding to someone or you're there in the moment, it, it always shifts too. Like you prepare something and then you're there with another actor and it can completely shift. Let's get into some season four spoilers. Now I will put the, the one and only warning up. You could talk about everything that happens in the season freely from this point on. Everyone's been warned. Go binge the show if you haven't yet. All right. So the Tori and Amanda storyline is hands down my favorite storyline of the season. Courtney is incredible. She seems like a lot of fun. What is something about her that really struck you as a scene partner? Something she does that may be brought out more in your own performance than you even knew you were capable of? I think Courtney has a great sense of humor. And I, I mean, obviously, she brings that into Amanda and I mean, in real life, too. But I think her energy and her um, realness, too. I think Tori keeps it real a lot of the time and keeps it pretty honest. But I think Amanda does, too. And um, Amanda has a little bit more of that than I think um, just from her past than, than Tori realized. And um, I think Courtney just brings like a great energy to the scenes and to the characters. And she always makes me laugh in between scenes. She's just a badass. She's a really cool woman. What do you think it is about Amanda that made her the right one to give Tori this nudge forward? And I guess, do you think any other character really could have done it on the show or did it come down to Amanda and there wasn't really another option? That's a good question. I think Amanda is one of the few characters who can keep her cool physically. I mean, besides the slap, I guess, to crease. But um, yeah, I, I think she can. She, and and also I did break into her home <laughs> and try to attack her daughter. And I think there's something that comes out of a mama bear in protection mode. And it really is amazing that she could sort, sort, sort of, you know, show mercy to Tori and um, give her another chance and just see this sort of like broken person and this wounded girl and um, sort of just, be, yeah, I, I think it was pretty amazing. She could be the bigger person. So yeah, I, I think that's one of the few people, I mean, Tori messed with her so much and she still showed grace. And I think that was a pretty cool thing. How about Tori's family stuff now? So we got to see a little of her life at home in season three and now also met her aunt in season four. But just for your own head, do you have to develop any additional backstory details to continue to kind of justify her headspace and the, the uh, choices that she makes? Yeah, yeah, I do. I mean, I, I guess I have to think about my relationship with my little brother and in the scene with my aunt uh, this season, I feel like I had to build a couple memories just for me. So this doesn't feel like some, you know, just a name. Um, but it's also difficult because the writers always surprise me so much on the show. So just like, okay, this is, you know, a work in progress. Who knows? Could change up at any time. <laughs> Have you thought much about her father? No, not much, not much because I have, I have no clue. I have no clue what that, what that is. I, I love looking at what the big theories are out there. And I feel like a fan favorite is predicting that Tori's father is is a character we know that is affiliated with the Karate Kid movies. I know. I've I've seen those too. And it's just, I, I don't even know what to believe anymore because everyone keeps messing with me even on set about it. <laughs> people will come up to me, different people, different guys on set will come up to me and say that they're my father. <laughs> They're like, or like, they're like, uh, yeah. And so I just, I'm like, I don't even know what, if anything's, tr I don't know what's true anymore. <laughs> I feel like a broken record at this point, but I love your show so much. It brings <laughs> such joy into my life. It's something I can share with my friends and my family. And I love the fandom oh. and engaging with everyone. You guys really built one heck of a community. So thank you to you and the entire team behind the show. Oh, well, thank you. And thanks for the questions. They were so detailed and fun. And I'm glad you enjoyed yeah. it. Big, yeah. big congratulations on Cobra Kai season four. Hopefully we'll thank circle you. back for season five soon. Yes. I'm waiting. I'm impatient. So I'm going to try. I know. I I I'm the most impatient too. I really am. 